I'll retell the story about how my cat, Jessie, she was, she used when she was a kitten, she got so neglected. She was just very neglected. I, I, Cause I gave all my love and attention to my, my, my baby boy, my kitty. I had my own cat. Jessie was neglected though. I mean, she then got all the attention and love and she could found out the outdoors existed. So she, she went and got attention from other cats. That's why she had babies, you know? Because, because she got attention from other cats. I, I remember she would always do that shit. She would go outside and cats would be out there going, Row, row. And I was like, what are you, what is that cat out there? Why the fuck is there a cat outside? You know, my house. Why, why is there a fucking bitch ass motherfucking cat? I don't even know in on my property, you know? So I wonder what the fuck's going on. And I'm like, no, Jesse, no more. No more going outside. I will give you the love and attention you deserve. And it's like, man, man, I feel bad for Jess. I should have given her more attention because now she's a hoe on the streets. She's a hoe on the streets, but she's my hoe. <laughs> and I love her. <laughs> and I'm going to give her more attention, you know. I learned that. She's an older now. But she's also tiny. She's a tiny little cat. But apparently she's like the most beautiful of cats around here on this block. All these, all these fucking cats on the block be like, I want to fuck that. So they do. <laughs> so she had babies and then she had a miscarriage. I feel so bad for her. <laughs> Maybe realize something. When I have kids, don't ever neglect them. See, having a cat can teach you things from a kitten's age. And that's when I learned Jesse. Jesse was different. And that's also when I learned my, my baby boy. My, my little baby fucking tuxedo looking motherfucker dick face. It's like, see, I know that's what happens when you give all the love and attention to one and then just completely neglect the other. And I'm like, wow. These cats, they're just, they have their own personal feelings, their own lives, and it makes me, it makes me think, wow, what do they really do out here? I want to put, like, a camera on my cat, see what he does out, out in the wild, out in the, out in the streets, as they would say, because he really does go be going around the streets. Look at him, right there, that motherfucker's in my window right now. Look at him, he's waiting for me. He loves me so much. He's soul bonded with me. He knows when I'm home. He knows when I'm home. Because yeah, that's that's the kind of bond I grew with him. But I never grew that bond with Jesse. She probably tried growing that bond with some fucking man whores out here on these streets that, that I had to shoot with my BB gun because I broke into my house because they chased his ass because basically his he, he right there is like Jesse's big brother, you know? So he, he protects her. He, he's, he's a good brother to Jesse. They're, they're good siblings. Yeah. I love both of them, but he's my, my, my baby boy always love him more but I still got to give that attention to Jessie because now she deserves it and I I realized it don't neglect your animals moral of the story <laughs> don't ever neglect your animals it's not gonna be the best not the best end results you'll you'll learn though so as long as you learn that's also what matters too as long as you learn about all that <laughs> when it comes to having your own animals or even like children because she was basically a child the whole time hmm. Do you want this on YouTube? Sure. I don't give a fuck. Okay. I don't give a fuck. I don't know who else thinks like that about their cats. And, and you know, having their own personal lives outside of just being in the house. If it's That's why I love having indoor-outdoor cats. Because they, they have their indoor lives. My baby boy. He's, like, weird. Because... He will give me all the love and attention that he fucking wants. He'll he'll rub up on me. He'll give me kisses on the nose. He'll he'll you know just keep rubbing up on me, wanting me to pet him all the time. But then the moment another cat comes in the room, whether it be Jesse or Jax, he'll be like, ah, ah, and then he'll be like, oh, he'll be like, leave me alone, leave me alone. And then he'll just go sit on the edge of my bed. I'm like, what is that? What's with that? He's embarrassed of you, man. Exactly, because he's got his own rep on the streets. He's, he, he's a pimp. He's a pimp. He's a pimp, man. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> Wait, a... what if he's pimping out Jesse, dude? Uh, I don't, I don't. Maybe. Fuck, dude. You think he's 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 he's, he, he's her pimp? It might be. Look, he'd be, be dressed like a pimp. Dude. I mean, he's all that? he's all dressed up and everything. He's just missing like a ring and a and, a, and he got he got to have the gold chains and everything. Too. He got to have that fucking the the pimp cane. So basically, this is like his brothel. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! 
That's <laughs> fucking never, mind blowing. I never fucking noticed. I never realized. That's <laughs> mind blowing. What if that? What if he is her pimp? That's why he <laughs> protects her because he's her pimp. He's a pimp on the streets. Now those streets being like this street and then like two streets down. Ugh, God damn. Maddie be up straight pimp. <laughs> but I know his vulnerabilities because he's my baby boy. Oh no, Maddie, don't leave the window. No, there he goes. He got tired of waiting for me because. I'm a being a dumbass out here, and he's like, okay, I'm fine. I'm not going to wait for this stupid motherfucker no more. <laughs> uh, it's just crazy, though. It's just crazy. You know? Have you ever thought of that? No. Have you ever thought of the, what cats do? Like, indoor, outdoor cats, when they go outside, and what they do outside. What their lives are. It's like, they're all on their own level of understanding. They don't have full sentience. Or like like self consciousness to the point where they can recognize themselves in a mirror, they they know what they are, but they don't recognize it in, in a different perspective, and they still have their own lives. They still have their own lives entailed within themselves, being in the outdoors. That's why indoor outdoor cats are the best too, because you can learn a lot thing or two about your cats too. They they can become stronger. They they can claw outside because it's in their natural instincts too. See, that's why cats aren't fully meant to be domesticated. They're, they're meant to be, like, kind of domesticated, but not fully. So that way they can have their own lives outside of being in the house all the time. Cats deserve to be out there, because then you can learn so much about them. Yeah, but I shit you not, there's, those motherfuckers will come out into this damn yard, this big-ass motherfucking black and white one that looks like Maddie, but ain't Maddie. He's a lot fluffier and chunkier. Comes over here and meows for Jesse, because... And not the, that 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 too is the bobcat one too, but maybe bobcat one was too rough with Jesse, so so Jesse went and told Maddie, and then Maddie's like, "I right, motherfucker, I'm gonna beat your ass." <laughs> so and Maddie has no friend claws because the previous owners were assholes and they got him declawed. I think he should have never been declawed. So he runs, he scurries inside because he was being chased around by that fucking big ass other cat that was like gray and black, and he comes inside and. You know what, Maddie couldn't defend himself because he didn't have his claws. So, you know, I was home at the time and I was like, I, motherfucker, I, motherfucker was scurrying through the entire house. I think he attacked my other cat, Jax, too. Jax wasn't, Jax was just minding his own business. He's an old man. We found him. My mom found him at, at her work. He's an old fucker. So he'll just, he was just minding his business. And I bet you this motherfucking bobcat went, scurried through, saw him. And it was like, hey, who the fuck are you too? Hey, I'm a, I'm a, I don't like you. I'm a, you're, you're seeming a little bigger than me, a little dominant. So he fucking go, he bites my jacks, my poor jacks. I'm more like Tyler's jacks now, but yeah, whatever. But yeah, so I got my fucking BB gun out, and I was like, I right, motherfucker, I'm gonna kick your ass. I popped two, two bullets in his dome. I'm pretty sure I got him in the head twice, and then he sprinted out the fucking door. He wasn't a dumbass. We had that door wide open, wide mm -hmm. open for him to leave. He wouldn't leave. He wanted to kick Maddie's ass. So I, I was the motherfucker who stood in for my baby boy because I don't want him getting injured. I fucking popped two two little BB bullets in him and probably got hit really hard because they won't they won't like go in all the way. They'll just kind of hit you really hard and leave bruises, really bad bruises too. So yeah, and I got that motherfucker out my motherfucking house. And you know what? Motherfucker has not showed up. Not showed up. See, it's like these cats have, have their own... They have their own, like, like, uh, what's it called? Like, jealousy. They, they mm -hmm. have, they, they have the ability of probably, like, drama, too. It's just crazy, you know? It's always crazy when them cats be feeling. I never realized it. I was like, damn. Who knows what be, what be my kitties be doing outside of the house? Because I don't. I mean, I didn't know. And I was like, I'm gonna think about that now. Now I got questions for my baby boy. Oh my god. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna question my cat and be like, hey yo, what you doing on the streets with Jesse? Are you her peomp? Her peomp? Because maybe it's. Go in there, fucking you might just be right about ass. that. You'll be good cop, Tyler be bad cop, you know. <laughs> Tyler would be make a bad he would make a he'd make a good bad cop. Cause that's how he reacts too with, with like Adric. I'll be the one who's like, hey, you need to you need to put that away in the, the Xbox and go to bed. Tyler would be like, okay, I'm unplugging that thing and it's taking it away. I'm like, yeah, you know, fucking asshole. <laughs> that's pretty, you know, that's pretty, pretty stern of him to do. But 
I'm the one who's the good cop in that scenario because I just tell Ader kind of calmly and be like, hey, you gotta go to bed. And Tyler's like, okay, I'm gonna plug that motherfucker. It's like, whoa, Tyler, whoa, whoa, whoa. But yeah, now I'm gonna do that to my Maddie so I make see so see good good cop bad cop <laughs> with that kitty. I even gotta do the same with Jesse. Oh I don't want her hoeing around no more. Being being Maddie's being Maddie's little 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 uh, hoe. little hoe, you know, with him being a pimp. <laughs> I don't want him being a pimp because that's not who he is. He's not a pimp. He's my lover boy. He's he's my little cuddle buddy. He's not a pimp. That's not who he is. He only shows his true self to me. <laughs> Everyone else, he's a disguised as a pimp for Jesse, just because of the the, the stipulations. The the. You know, he has whole... to keep up his facade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has to keep up his whole facade of it all. Yeah, he can't be caught cuddling with your ass. No, he can't. Because you know what? They're going to think, oh, but the cat's on the street. They're gonna, The word's going to go around drama, mm -hmm. right? Because they have their own drama. <laughs> and I don't want them knowing. That's how I know they have their own their thoughts about drama shit. And they, they talk to each other and tell each other things. There was even this time when the kitten came out of nowhere. Came out of nowhere. And Jesse and this kitten were friends. I brought this kitten inside and... Oh, that kitten didn't like being inside whatsoever. But yet it's still like being great friends with Jesse. Maybe Jesse had, a, had kids out here that I never knew about. Maybe. Because the cat looked like her, or the kitten looked like her, and then it, it, it scurried outside after a couple days because it wasn't used to being mm -hmm. inside after being outside for so long, most of its life. Maybe. Just maybe. Who knows? It, it came up to me. That kitten came up to me and eventually... Let me pet it because Jesse also likes to do that. I don't know what it is with her, but she has like a, she she has like a. She likes to be impressive. I mm -hmm. guess she wants to impress me in the household because sometimes she'll just bring her friends around the front yard or around the backyard or even in the garage space, and they'll just be chilling there, like she's trying to come here to show them off or something. I don't know. You know, they're going on dates right before the, the you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, at least she's, she's trying to coerce At least she, she's being a little woman about it, you know? If they're going on dates, she, she, she's she's going to, she takes them to family, right? It's like, I want you to meet my mom type shit, right? Right? <laughs> but instead, these fuckers, no, they'll usually just scurry away while Jesse's like, Hey, come back. Come back. It's okay. Because they don't know what it's like to have human interaction. Because they're all fucking like feral beings. And man, Jesse also must be very like kinky or some shit. I swear, those na those fucking feral ass outdoor cats of twenty four seven. Because there's so many living around here. They got claws. I probably dig in her. And oh no, poor Jesse. <laughs> We've been talking about this shit for thirteen minutes. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, it's very puzzling and interesting to think about the curiosity of what cats do. There was this one time I saw a video too of a cat. Like he had a he had a, a a what's it called a camera on his neck around his leash. It showed this cat going on top of rooftops up and down, find these other cats, befriend them, or either beat the shit out of them, and then it would go and find a spot and kick out the dirt and actually piss in it, piss in the hole that it made. And then it would cover the hole up. Humans do that too. Like out in the wild, say you're going yeah. camping, right? You go behind a tree, dig a whole shit in it, and then cover it up. Cats do the same fucking thing. I know from litter boxes, but I didn't know they would do that naturally. I thought they would just shit in the natural wild, but mm -hmm. I guess it's instinctively because it's it's they've probably been doing it for so long. You know, we've probably taught them that though. The Egyptians. There's a. I, I th I'm gonna make my own conspiracy about the Egyptians because they they they. Praised those, they praised all like like Persian cats mm -hmm. as as like uh, gods or something like like animals sent from the gods. Yeah, they're messengers. Yeah, they're messengers, right? That's why pharaohs became pharaohs became a thing. All the tombs and then why they were designed the way they were is because of cats, and that's when the domestication process started. There's also a theory uh, this one probably exists is that these cats came from space, and that they're actually aliens. And that's why the that's why the Egyptians did what they did is because that's what they were thinking, right? Mm -hmm. They were thinking, "Wow, these were these are gods or something like that." 
So who knows? Who really knows? You know, it's not like I was an Egyptian. <laughs> they had those cats help them. They used the cat technology before they abandoned it. <laughs> Thousands of years ago, they had the cat technology. That's how the pyramids were built. The cats helped them. The fucking cats. <sighs> I, I, I shit you not. I shit you not. It's got to be those fucking cats. That's how the pyramids were built. They had the cats help. Pulleys weren't... I don't think pulleys were invented until years later, and, and it would take too many men to transfer that limestone. Niles. Niles. It would have to take them years and years and years. It shouldn't have technically ever been finished with how long the Egyptian Empire lasted. So, I don't know. And it was all along the Nile in the middle of the desert. There's no way you could survive traveling that, so they had to use cat technology. <laughs> These cats be aliens, I swear. So Maddie's just a domesticated alien. <laughs> all cats are just domesticated <laughs> aliens. That's fucking crazy. Isn't that crazy? That's fucking crazy. And you know what's also crazy? Is that if you play certain frequencies, these cats, cats in general, will just act differently. Play 615 hertz. Mm -hmm. Just just playing it from an audio device. They'll act differently. They'll. It's like they're they're trying to react to a sound that they used to know. Like like it would be their home world calling to them. And we were able to find the hertz that frequencies that. And and they look they listen around like this sounds like I know it, you know? Like, they instinctively think that because it's instinctively put into them after they came from their home world of hearing those frequencies. So they think it's their home world calling, but they don't know that. They just recognize it as something that once existed that don't exist in them anymore. Cats are aliens, motherfucker. They're also scared of cucumbers. Yeah, I wonder why that is. I don't know what's up with that. Why are they scared of the cucumbers? Well, I mean, I don't think it's just cucumbers in general, though. I think that anything... Just all dick-shaped items. All dick-shaped items. <laughs> maybe too many cats got... <sighs> maybe no, those Egyptians no. got a little too much with the kitties, and it made them fear. But I don't think, I don't think Egyptians <laughs> had big green cucumbers, you know. <laughs> so, huh, maybe it's just big, long things in general. Maybe Egyptians were hanging low. Who knows? I don't. I don't. Their skeletal remains don't really show either, so who knows? That's probably why they're scared of cucumbers, though. Maybe those Egyptians would. Some of them would go a little, little feral themselves and, and a little, little down bad for some of that cat Usi and. Oh, wee. That's not good. Man, those Egyptians were terrible for doing that if they did that. I, I swear, that's, that's awful. Jesus. Who in the right line would do that? <laughs> well, they think it pleased the cat gods or something? I don't even know. <laughs> Still don't know about that. Those cat gods. Those <laughs> cat, cat, cats are from the heavens. Cats are aliens amongst us all. Whatever you want to believe it. It's still, like, the way you want to believe it, it's like a higher deity sent it from above. Whether it be your god, whether it be aliens, you know. It really is about belief, but truly all beliefs could, could have that connective ability, so... That's why I think some conspiracies where they have beliefs all connect and intertwine is, is because it's real. Who knows? But who knows about anything these days? Because, like, the black holes, they're only theorized. <laughs> they're never proven. We don't know how they work still. Just like our own brains, too. Mm -hmm. And how it reminds me of a story as well. It gets me on the topic. Yeah, the cats, the cats and cats and shit were good. There's... It's a good story about those kitties and my, my whole thoughts about those cats and what they do and how they think and why they think. I want to do study. I want to become a catologist or something. I don't know. Anyways, and that reminds me of a, another story about, um, uh, what the fuck was it? Shit, what was I going to say? Fuck, man, I forgot. Fuck. I fucking what did you say? You, you said something. I said... Something about dick-shaped items? No, no. Uh, yeah, that was the last thing you said. I think it was something I said about black holes and, and how the interconnections between all beliefs could be similarized in one way or another, right? Like, they, they have similarities. And that the fact that, uh... Yeah. I don't know why it brought me to this point, but I'm so mixed-minded with everything. Anyways. <laughs> so this fucking... Uh, back in the day... Shit, man. I was talking about black holes, and then 
There was this story. Have you ever heard of the fuzzy lamp story? Dude, it's fucking crazy. It will get you thinking, thinking so much about how the human brain works too. And, and the fact that when you, this dude, okay, he was, I don't know how old he was. He's probably out of high school working a nine to five job, just doing his usual biz. Out of nowhere, this dude comes up to him and, and just knocks him the fuck out, all right? So then he wakes the fuck up. He meets this girl, falls in love with this girl. They eventually has, have kids. He gets a better job. You know, he learns so much about this woman and, and who she is and, and when they have kids together. He's living a great and happy life, making good money, you know? And then he sees something weird one day these days, something out of the ordinary, something that's misplaced, something that shouldn't be there, something that looked 3D, but yet 4D at the same time. And 4D isn't even perceivable by us, but the way we can perceive it is so, it's just so, it's so just not understandable by our mind's cognitive ability. This dude sees a lamp in the corner of the room. It looked like it was 3D, but inverted at the same time. So you could see the legs like normally, but the legs would be in the front that were in the back. And the legs that were in the front were like kind of sideways. It was all inverted in 3D, like I was saying. And he just stares at it and just went like staring at it for a couple hours. And he just, every once in a while he would, he would stare at it, take a piss break, eat some food, come back. And then it got worse and worse. He just kept staring at it over and over and over again until he wouldn't eat for days, wouldn't sleep for days, and would just, just stare at this lamp and wondered, what the fuck is wrong with this? This isn't real. This thing isn't fucking real. This lamp isn't fucking real. And everything come crashes in on him. He, he, he has like sensory overload at every sound in the world that he's ever heard out of the blue. His, his, his mind starts to go fuzzy. His vision goes away. He, he starts, he starts drenching like away. Starts, starts floating away from the world that he knew. It just starts going away slowly in like a black, black, black little hole gets smaller and smaller and then eventually kaboom. Like kind of like the Big Bang, he wakes up. And guess what? He was only out for three minutes. Out for three minutes after getting knocked out by somebody. And his whole 15 years of life was fake. He lived for, he was, he was, asleep for three minutes but it felt like 15 years for him of living a life falling in love with somebody getting a better job having kids mm. it was all just fake it never happened it was not real and he's like what the fuck and that dude was traumatized for life from that and the crazy part is is that he he walked up to this girl who we found in real life after waking up and he tells her he tells her all about everything that he knows about her and she responds with how the fuck do you know all this about me how do you know so much about me how do you know my deepest darkest secrets <sighs> and that whole time it was just not real but it felt so real to him it's just crazy crazy stories about that too that's another that's why i got on the topic after thinking about the how we don't even know the mind fully works because I have another, I have a conspiracy about that too. And it's that, well, when you get knocked out like that, you get knocked out unconscious to the point of your consciousness can temporarily leave its body and somehow move faster than the speed of light at ludicrous speed, even, maybe even faster than that. And I mean, theoretically, you could, it could just, your consciousness could hop universes. And this dude probably lived in a different body with his consciousness in a different universe. And I'm like, that shit's whack. Jesus fucking Christ. Imagine if I'm, imagine right. if I'm knocked out somewhere and, and this, this what's happening right now is just all fabricated and not real. And I would walk up to you like I knew, like I've known you for, you know, a couple years and you, you had no idea who I was. That shit would be fucking crazy, you know? Because you wanna know why I think this could be a possibility for me? 
Mm. There was there's a story about me when I was younger, my fucking older brother. He decided to hit me pretty fucking hard with like a big ass turtle box something. Fucking broke my like I got a big scar right here from it. And it went down to the bone. They also told me I had like a highest level or like third degree concussion or whatever it was. And they told me not to sleep for 24 hours. So it has at least the potential and the time to heal. And they said if you sleep within the next 24 hours, you will perchance be in a coma. And I'm like, oh, okay. I ended up falling asleep 12 hours after I got that hand injury. And a, and a part of me never even remembered waking up. I mean, you had a concussion, guy. Yeah, but I mean, it's just theoretical. I'm only like mm -hmm. thinking, who? What if? What if it actually happened? What if? It's only a what if, you know. I mean, there's no way it, it actually was a thing because I was. You're right. So it just it was just a concussion, but still, yeah, just thinking, thinking about, about it, it, man. Because I had an experience like that mm -hmm. about a story that someone told. But I ain't seen no fuzzy fucking lamp in the last goddamn fifteen years. <laughs> So, no, I don't think that's a real thing, but it's only just imaginable. It's just a what-if type scenario, and I'm like, damn. Dude. Who knew we could not know so much about everything that exists? Dude, I'm having the greatest time, but I'm passing the fuck out. Yeah. This video is 27 minutes long. You want to end it there, then? Yeah, yeah. All right, that's a good ending, then. Hope whoever the fuck's going to watch this enjoyed that fucking... Whatever. <laughs> Whatever abomination of, of overthinking and being retarded story. So, yeah. Like and subscribe, mother truckers. Like and subscribe if you want kind of like more content like this where it's just random ass stories, you know? About who knows what, you know? But yeah, like and subscribe. Yeah.